Hi guys, a video about the resolution of your uh, sim racing pedals and often measured in bits, 8 bit, 10 bit, 12 bit or recently even 24 bit but what does it mean? What do these bits mean? Are there any other factors that we should be looking at? How do we weigh these factors? What's actually important? What isn't? Uh, because often the numbers are uh, overstated and uh, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes and uh, the only thing I managed to to do for you today is compile a spreadsheet and a PowerPoint presentation so flee now while you can uh, the topics a bit of an intro and disclaimer I'll look at the weakest link in the chain because we will see there are a lot more things involved than just the bits that the electronics the steps that they calculate we'll look at a 5000 euro euros well this is a dollar last time I saw this sign a laboratory scale look at the specs of a really high-end weighing scale see what that does we'll do some spreadsheet work because fun and then there might be some conclusions no other reason than that this picture was in the previous uh, PowerPoint that I made that's me it is 1984 a long time ago so this trumps everything I have single-seater experience right I'm a racing driver, well, okay, no. A uh, small print. Mistakes are human. Some say I'm human. I'm not too sure myself. But yeah, I can make mistakes, so if there are errors here in, the, in everything that I do, feel free to point them out and uh, I'll try to correct them. Hopefully uh, they're not too glaringly bad or obvious. In the whole exercise here, uh, it's about numbers. And often in, in specs of products you see a big number or a small number so uh, audio is a good thing so you can buy a car and you go for the 9000 watt Burmeister audio option as if the watts say anything and I could actually make a video about that watts say nothing about how loud it will go or the quality of the sound yet somehow since the invention of, of, of speakers watts are uh, they sell it's weird and the same is for for pedal resolution a larger number sells so 12 bit is better than 10 bit and recently 24 bit so that's twice as good in fact it's far more than 12 bit but hang on it's it's 2017 uh, there's a bit of science and reason in the world can you just look at numbers no you have to look at the in, in, in perspective really so uh, I've made some uh, some cunning examples what if you hit hit in the face by Muhammad Ali 4,000 times or 1 point, uh, sorry, 17 million times. Is there a difference between those two things? Really? No. I'm dead at the second blow, pretty sure. What about your uh, your bank account? You got 4,000 or 17 million? That's the same. Both by a Bugatti Veyron, although, well, okay, a scale model. An actual one. So, no. In that case, they're different. What about bricks? A pile of bricks, 4,000 bricks, or 70 million bricks? That's a house, so I'd say, yeah, in that case, the numbers actually mean something different. What if you have 4,000 maxed out credit cards, or 17 million maxed out credit cards? You're broke, bro. You're just broke. Flee the country. What if you hit the snooze button? 4,000 times in the morning, or 17 million times in the morning? It's the same. You're fired. And let's say you go to a rock concert, right? And there's 4,000 decibels of noise, or 17 million decibels of noise. Result? That's the same. You're deaf. Uh, kilobytes of RAM. Back in the days, 4,000 kilobytes. You could play Wolfenstein 3D. Or with 17 million kilobytes. I don't know how much that is. It sounds like a lot. You could probably play Crisis. That's different. What about the degrees of opposite lock you can apply in a slide in a racing simulator? Well, 4000 degrees, that's a pretty good slide, but 70 million degrees of opposite lock, now that's the reef though. Uh, and then simulator pedal steps. 4000 or 70 million, well, it's a lot. And the other one's also a lot, so how does that compare? Let's see. The bits, right? 8 bits effectively means 256 steps, 10 bits is 1000 steps, 12 bits is 4000 steps, and 24 bits is 17 million steps, purely looking at what the bits theoretically mean. But that's only a small part of it really, so 
there is, as we will see later in a spreadsheet, uh, the USB update rate, which is could be a weak link. And another weak link often is how often the SIM checks for a pedal update, if it's a, got a new position or not. Can also uh, limit the effective accuracy. But that's not that's only a small part of it really, because mechanical factors, friction, play in your pedals, a bit of weeble wobble, vibrations, I don't know, every sort of small thing starts to play a role. The, the sensor in, in the brake pedal in this case, for example, the load cell, will have a certain accuracy and repeatability. We'll look at an example uh, later. And at some point that, that might become the weak link and not the bit, the bit I, was, I, I always want to say bit rate, but it's just uh, the, 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 the bits in, in pedals. The electric circuit, the, the, the circuit board, is there a noise in the system so you can have a lot of theoretical bits, like 12 bit, 4000 steps, but if the design of the, the circuit board is bad, you might have a lot of noise and, and, and sort of jitter and the, the effective resolution will not be uh, achieved. A lot of things could be wrong. So that's important to, uh, to bear in mind. So at what point do all these other errors uh, exceed the bit accuracy? So let's, let's put that in perspective. So with 8-bit, the error of like friction or a bit of noise in, uh, in your electronics may not exceed 0.39%. 10-bit, it's 0.098%. 12-bit is even less. And at 24-bit, it's a silly number. And this is important to keep in mind because there will be tolerances on uh, friction and, and electronics and at some point they will be greater than the the bit step, the accuracy uh, in, in bits. And if your error is larger, say you have a lot of friction in your brake pedal, 1%, then you cannot do accurate repeated presses of a certain force. You might press a perfect force every time, but the friction will take up some of the force and perhaps uh, the result will be that you don't even reach 8-bit accuracy because it's a little different every time, even though you press it effectively the same every time. And these are not large percentages, right? You can imagine a little bit of friction or a bit, little bit of tolerance on the PCB, electronics. It's not hard to achieve more uh, tolerance than this. Uh, another example, uh, applying to the human leg. <coughs> Let's say we push, push 100 kilos, 220 pounds on the brake pedal, which is a significant force, but it's within uh, reason for, for uh, race car braking. Um, that means 0.39 kilos uh, in 8-bit mode, so that's about a can of soda. At 10-bit mode, it's like a step. Each each little step that the pedal sees, that the electronic sees, is about one table knife. Yes, I did actually measure a table knife. Uh, at 12-bit, you're looking at 24 uh, grams, so that's about my uh, Ford Fiesta car key. At 24-bit, and this uh, was a tricky one, I had to do some calculations, the, the step that 24 bits is in 100 kilos worth of pressure. One six the weight of the air inside a ping pong ball. The weight of air inside a ping pong ball. Imagine that a ping pong ball is not very large, and inside the ping pong ball is six times more weight than a 24 bit step of 100 kilos worth of pedal pressure. And ping pong balls are probably not filled with air, for all the hate that's about to uh, to burst loose in the comments. So the 8-bit example, can you repeat 50 leg presses of 50 kilo within 0.39 kilo accuracy? Really? Can you? I doubt it. I'm not sure. I bet you can't. Uh, but that would actually make a fun test that hopefully at some point if we have a lot of time and uh, stuff on our hands we might do some tests. But don't overestimate your human leg uh, capabilities. So, right, what about the weakest link in the chain? If you have a certain pedal resolution and it's not limited by the USB update rate or the SIM uh, polling rate and there's friction and all the electronical tolerances, they don't exceed this and you have godlike legs and you're able to control the force at such an exact level then the bit specification is actually uh, useful and, and you're, it's being applied and you're using it to the fullest. But that's if, right? That's a lot of ifs. So, 
to put some things in perspective here we have a five thousand bucks precision scale for in, in laboratory use and stuff like that and I've highlighted some of the wrong things in yellow so forget that let's look here at the repeatability which is one of the specs given and it's about 0.1 milligrams for a hundred gram uh, load to where I read it there are a lot more tolerances here but I'm gonna isolate one and this is taking probably a few shortcuts but let's let's go with it right so 100 grams is 100,000 milligrams 0.1 milligram repeatability so that's basically if you have perfect legs and you press exactly to the nanogram the same force what does the the weighing scale in this case or the pedal say so it's purely the the, the in the repeatability of the yeah well that's a pretty clear word actually the repeatability of the system if we calculate the number of steps that will be is about 1 million in this case so that's 20 bit so this 5000 bucks scale has a 20 bit accuracy probably however here's the big one it takes up to 3 seconds it takes 3 seconds to stabilize to make sure to you know and you know it can take 3 seconds to well, let's look at the look at it for a little while longer let's do some modifications some filtering are we really sure and then after three seconds this is the value this is the weight that you've put on the scale but pedals we don't have three seconds for each value if you want if you floor it uh, and, uh, when the race starts you press the pedal down you don't want to wait three seconds for the car to accelerate we want it to accelerate right away and if you have a 250 hertz usb board which is fair so the scale, the expensive scale, takes three seconds, but the pedals only have, have four milliseconds to react. Now you can imagine if you have three seconds to look at uh, a sensor value and to filter it and to smooth it and to, to make double sure what is reading, you can do a lot more precision than when you only have four milliseconds to do the same thing. Effectively, the scale weighs, uh, weighs I don't know what it weighs, but it costs 5,000, and the pedal electronics board, well, perhaps you want to pay uh, or, or, or you don't want the cost to exceed 50 bucks if you're making uh, pedals in, in, in a large series rough estimate here so a huge difference right so you see we have a fraction of the time to do the measurement and we have a fraction of the cost worth of parts to do the measurement with the scale might get 20 bit accuracy but is it, re is it realistic for the pedals to achieve a high accuracy well I, no I don't think it's possible 12-bit is very very accurate for something that responds so quickly so achieving true 12-bit pedal electronics and that's still we are forgetting the mechanical and human tolerances which I think are larger already than the 12-bit but we'll, we'll look at it later and if you want to update it at a high rate for a reasonable cost it's not easy at all but using a 24-bit analog to digital converter chip which can be purchased for a fair price put it on a 50 or even 100 bucks PCB and claiming it to be 24 bit accuracy on, on your pedals that's not super hard I'm not an electronics engineer I cannot do it but if you are uh, and you got some experience you can make that and it could be a perfectly fine board but it's not likely to be true 24 bit and that's uh, I, have a, I have a deep urge to say that's impossible it's unlikely so in fact I'll bet you one thousand bucks it's not possible and I actually stand by it if we can measure that someday you get a thousand bucks if you uh, come up with a pedal board that's actually true m a laboratory measurement repeatable 24-bit accuracy so spreadsheets then that's uh, I bet you you thought this couldn't be more fun and it's about to get more fun so I made a spreadsheet and we assume a perfect pedal sensor uh, perfect electronics no noise and we forget all the friction and the human uh, factors and, and everything like that so let's see what that does and now i have to quit this spread uh, this does it work powerpoint escape Ooh, that works spreadsheet time Ooh. what do we have here i barely understand myself no really we have two cases the red lines and the green lines we have adjustable things here so I have in this case I have a pedal resolution the first case 10-bit second case 24-bit 
and I have a configurable USB frequency and a SIM frequency. And let's see here. The event that I'm simulating is pressing the throttle. Zero to full throttle in one and a half seconds. That's probably fair coming out of a corner. If you have a powerful car, you might want to be slowly on the, uh, slow on throttle. Probably a fair value. We can change it later, see what, uh, what happens. And I'm only plotting 50 milliseconds, right? So that's 50 milliseconds. It's really nothing. I can change that as well. So let's... I haven't played with this actually. This is going to be fun. Uh, let's see what happens. Here, the thick lines, which there is a red one underneath the green one, so they're actually doing the same thing at the moment. Is these are the most important ones. So the thick lines are the most important ones. That's the value that your simulator, the software, actually sees. So first there is the, the pedal. So uh, let's make a case where the pedal resolution is 8-bit and that's 256 steps. It's got a very slow uh, USB update rate. Well, very slow. It's standard. 125 hertz is a standard USB update rate. And the SIM pulls checks for a new update at 60 times per second. So let's look at the red charts then. The pedal output, pure electronics output, is the continuous line, the red continuous line that's not thick. So that's this line here taking the steps. Because in this case the pedal is only uh, registering 256 steps. And we're looking at a tiny, tiny bit of time, 50 milliseconds, right? So let's zoom out. See, now it's much more a straight line already. So back to the 50 milliseconds. Applying the throttle in one and a half seconds means that it takes one and a half seconds to, to cover all 256 uh, steps here. So every little bit of time, we get another step. Very easy, very visible here. And now let's up that resolution. Go to uh, 9 bits for example. And you'll see these steps become smaller. See? At 9 bits we get f f uh, smaller steps. Half the, st half the size really. So that's what the pedal does. Uh, important. But the next thing is the USB speed. So your pedal might be perfect, but the speed at which the USB port transfers the pedal position to the computer, to Windows, is another factor. So let's do that very slowly. At 50 Hertz. So we have a pedal that's pretty good, like it's got a lot of steps. Here is the red little stairs. It reports its position to the electronics, but the electronics only report it every so often to the PC. And that's the dotted red line. So it takes a lot of time. So the pedal is moving, you're moving the pedal, it's doing something, look at the red line. But it takes a lot of time, because the USB rate is very slow, 20 milliseconds, before it finally registers a value. So that's the step we see here. We are still pressing the pedal nicely, but the PC isn't seeing any new updates until 20 milliseconds later here and then finally it gets a new update sent to Windows to the PC and then boom another step so effectively in this 50 milliseconds we have a lot of pedal steps that's really nice but the sim only sees 0, 1, 2 steps in this case so the USB frequency is quite important as well let's up that, update that, so let's go to an 8-bit pedal and let's go to 125 hertz USB now you see that the pedal is worse we went from 512 steps to 256 steps but we upped the USB rate and that actually meant the result of the pedal is a lot smoother because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 steps whereas previously the pedal was more accurate, but the USB rate was very slow, so we had less accuracy in practice. Now, this might all sound quite confusing, but I hope it makes some sense. And finally, 
what's important uh, is the physics rate or the sim, uh, the polling rate of the sim. Now this cannot exceed the physics frequency that the physics engine runs at in the simulator, which is typically 360 hertz in most modern uh, sims. For some reason, they all use the same uh, value. But uh, a lot of games and even still quite a few sims, they may only check the USB controllers or your pedals at a rate of 60 hertz which is very very slow now there have been some recent developments in uh, quite a few sims so the value could be higher but it's also a weak link so effectively what the sim sees well let's let's look at this right case here so we have incredible accuracy 24 bits 17 million steps and let's give it a super high USB rate of 1000 hertz that's great, right? So look at the green line is now the, the pedal position. It's a perfectly smooth, super accurate line. Every tiny little bit of pedal pressing is, is changing the sensor value perfectly. We have a 1000 Hz USB, which is the fastest uh, that it can be. Where is the dotted line? Where is the dotted line? Oh no. Okay, you see that the dotted line is almost on top of the continuous line, so at a thousand hertz we can't even see them, right? They're right on top of each other. So the pedal is super accurate and the USB speed is super high. So in this case 24 bits, 1000 hertz, perfect. We get a perfect straight super fast response. But the SIM only checks at 60 hertz. So despite having a 24 bit board at a thousand hertz we see one, two, three steps simply because the weak link here is the simulator. So, extremely important not to look at the bits, because in this case, effectively the pedals are almost the same. Let's zoom out a little. So look at these thick lines, the thick stairs. The red line and the green line, they're pretty close together. Yet we are comparing an 8-bit, 125Hz USB board with a 24-bit, 1000 hertz USB board. Is this different? No. The, this, this major stair-like shape is pretty much the same. There are small differences, but look at the output of the pedal. It's, it's almost nothing. And we're looking at 0.5 of a second. So these are very small differences, despite the differences in the electronic specs being huge. In this case, limited by the simulator. Okay. If that's, uh, I hope I made that somewhat clear. Um, anyway, now look at a more modern situation where, let's say, the USB communications are at the physics frequency. It makes no sense. Let's say your physics frequency is 360 hertz. You can uh, check your USB uh, pedals at a million hertz, but the the physics input uh, dictates sort of that's the weak link um, you can report a thousand times per second a new pedal input but it's only used in the physics calculations 360 times per second so this is the maximum currently possible uh, rate at which you can look for a new pedal position so doing that and zooming out again now we do see a difference so in this case the 24-bit uh, controller looks smoother it's more of a straight line the 8-bit controller with a 360 hertz game update rate looks a, a little jagged right it's not like it's completely uh, out of uh, out of whack and effectively it's still applying quite a few steps in here like a hundred milliseconds it's applying a lot of steps and it's certainly not inaccurate and bear in mind, we're ignoring human inaccuracies, uh, signal jitter or uh, friction. So this is only theoretically uh, looking at the situation. But yeah, it's a difference. So what if we change the USB rate from this chip? So we remain at 8 bits, but let's go to 250. Ooh, now that's, I would say, a lot closer already. So now we're comparing 8 bits. 250 hertz with 24 bits 1000 hertz yes there is a difference i'd say if you're driving you wouldn't notice this one bit but okay there's a difference there's a difference 
Will it improve if we up the USB rate of the poor old 8-bit controller? Yep, 500 Hz. Pretty close now. Still a little less smooth, but pretty close. Now let's equal it. 1000 Hz. Well, we are very close. In practice, I'd say this is roughly the same, but there is still a difference. But that's 8 bits versus 24 bits. Look at what you would expect. A huge difference, because it's 256 steps versus 17 million steps. But, eh, effectively the same. But 8 bits is nothing, right? Because today most pedals have at least 8 bits. Perhaps they have 10 bits. Look at 10 bits then. The situation changes, because now it's almost impossible to see the difference between the 24-bit and the 10-bit. Effectively the same. Go to 12-bit. And now it's almost perfectly hidden behind this line, so they're effectively the same. So, what if we zoom in then, because we're looking at small changes, at the first 50 milliseconds, right? So 50 milliseconds is, is like, uh, perhaps, if that. Uh, really, really, really short amount of time. And we are comparing 12-bit with 24-bit, and look at the thick lines here, they're effectively the same. So... Let's make it worse, see what it looks at if we uh, go back to 8 bits and 125 hertz. So at this really low value we have excellent uh, simulator uh, polling, like it checks for updates 360 times per second. Bear in mind that at least some time ago, I don't know if they still do it, iRacing is 60. If that's the weak link, even in this case, the difference between 8-bit and 24-bit and 125Hz and 1000Hz is not that much. But let's assume a good sort of modern speed simulator there. At this point, yeah, we do see a difference. The 24-bit controller has slightly jagged, because we're zooming right in, right? 50 milliseconds is nothing, we're super zoomed in, so this is not a perfectly straight line, it can be. But it's pretty good. And in this case the 8-bit controller reporting at only 125 hertz. Yeah, it's got noticeably more uh, jagged steps. 500 hertz. See, it's getting closer already. 1000 hertz. A little bit closer. 10-bit. See, 10 bits. At the same USB rate, M-SIM uh, polling rate. Is there a difference between these lower thick lines? Yes. Is it a real difference? No. 12 bit. No questions here really. It's the same. Okay, so that's a lengthy way to explain that uh, in, in practical terms and remember still forgetting friction, forgetting our human inaccuracies and, and all sorts of other factors purely theoretically comparing bit rates and, and transfer rates and stuff like that. 12-bit, 24-bit, same thing. Here's another thing though, the saddle time. Because we looked at the laboratory scale, in, uh, I mentioned that in the PowerPoint. What happens there? See, the, the, the laboratory scale does have a 20-bit accuracy, but it can take up to 3 seconds to stabilize the value. So it has 3 seconds to calculate the fin final value, whereas the pedals only have, in a case of 250 hertz, 4 uh, milliseconds. So what happens, right? Let's say the electronics board uh, runs at a thousand hertz internally, and if you have to report a new value to the PC every 4 milliseconds, that means you have 4 values that you can average to get a smooth, nice value. The laboratory scale has 3000 values to average and that means it will be a lot more accurate. So, let's say... Uh, the signal noise, right? There's always a little bit of noise, and let's assume the value fluctuates between 1995 and 2005. We get four values that we average, or we get 3000 values that we average. Uh, where are we? If I calculate this, I do a random calculation, you'll see that 
the laboratory scale because it can average 3000 values will always return 2000 basically. Theoretically it might not always do but effectively yes. And every time I press the calculate button you'll see the sim pedal which only has the time to average 4 values because we want it to respond a lot quicker is never or often not at the average of 2000. 1998, 2001, 1999, 2002, 2001, 2002. So that's another reason why laboratory scales can be a lot more accurate because they can spend time to finalize the value whereas a sim pedal, well, we could, but you don't want the throttle to lag three seconds. You want that to be an, uh, an accurate, quick response. So what we don't see here is the response time, which is also very important. You don't want it to lag about. And at some point, if you have a super quick and accurate 8 bits that reacts quickly to your uh, pedal uh, inputs, could be more important in practice in driving than a 24 bit value that's actually very accurate but takes a longer time uh, to stabilize and a longer time to average a, a lot more values and then effectively there's lag in, uh, in the response. Wow, this is going on for a long time. Uh, conclusion time then, I hope. Uh, from current slide. Yes, 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 yes. We oui, conclusions. Bits. I think I've shown now that it's only a small part of the equation. There are a lot of tolerances, electrical, mechanical, human, uh, the USB speed and the simulator read rate, basically how often it checks for a new pedal position are very important as well, and there's a lot more. So the spreadsheet shows that above ten, uh, 8 or 10 bits, even with 8 bits, you can have a perfectly good, high, accurate, uh, good response. Or Well, it doesn't say anything about response, but it's accurate enough even at 8 bit. But let's say at 10 bit, the difference becomes very marginal. And at 12 bit, we saw that it's effectively the same as 24 bit. It's just no, uh, it's no use improving the bit value when there are other factors at play that are uh, the weaker link in the chain. And I bet with, you know, human considerations, 8 bits, plenty, really, I do. So the most, impo the most important bit, ha ha ha, get it? The number of bits says relatively little, really does. A good 8-bit board could still perform better than a bad 12-bit board if the electronics design is horrible or there's a lot of stuff going wrong in the firmware. The bits don't say everything. And a good 24-bit board is effectively the same as a good 12-bit board. Thank you uh, for watching this, if you, uh, if you did. Uh, I think this is a reasonable way to uh, put some numbers into perspective, rather than just going by uh, a larger number is more because it's better. So I hope you consider, uh, not just with pedals, but all the time when you see a larger value, the speaker has 1000 watts, the other has 500 watts, think first don't go by the numbers what might it actually mean what if there are some other factors at play hang on is this marketing wank you know important think about it first and thank you for watching i hope if if there is uh, if you highlight stuff if you have comments that i uh, have the time to reply but uh, no promises all right thank you for watching bye bye